Good morning. Happy Wednesday to you. Glad you have made it along with me to the middle of a brand new week. Uh, so glad to be able to have you a part of my life this morning as we spend some time encouraging ourselves as we walk as disciples of Jesus. This morning I want to read uh, Romans chapter 5, uh, beginning uh, at verse 1, reading through verse 5. Uh, Romans is a powerful, powerful book. If you spent any time in it whatsoever, uh, this is Paul's magnus opus, if you will. Uh, as you recall, Paul uh, had not uh, planted the church at Rome, so really Romans is Paul kind of introducing uh, what he's been teaching throughout the ancient world as he planted churches. Uh, he's teaching, he's kind of given an overview of his theology and his practice, and it is an absolute powerful book. And, you know, Paul lays his heart so bare in it, uh, laying out the supremacy of Christ, and, and just it's incredible as it encourages us to keep our eyes bolted to Jesus and so powerfully reminds us that Jesus is the foundation and center of our faith. And uh, here in verse 5, he begins to talk about uh, something that's really important to us. And, and so I want to begin at verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces faith and perseverance, character, and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Just such powerful words there. And, um, and the, the last verse of uh, chapter 4, Paul brought up this idea of justification. He says, who was delivered, he's talking about Jesus, who was delivered up because of our offenses was raised because of our justification. He's pointing there to the essential character of the mission of Jesus. Jesus came to bring justification for us through his body as he became our offense. He took our offenses upon himself and he nailed them to a tree and so he justified us in the sight of God. In other words, he took the righteous wrath of God that was revealed against all that were in rebellion against him. Jesus took that, that deserved wrath, that deserved due penalty upon himself. And in doing so, we have been justified or are declared just before God. That is an absolute stunning statement that God would do go to such depths and such lengths because of his great love for his people to do that for us, to justify us who were completely undone in our sin. Uh, you know, I spent some time in Psalm 53 this morning, and there uh, we see a lot of the same language. Paul quotes Psalm 53 a lot when he talks about there's none righteous, no, not one. He talks about the total depravity of man and uh, that has come upon us because of our sin. Jesus took that upon Upon himself and and now because of what Jesus did we have been justified uh, which is incredible now Paul goes on and talks about that, that we have been justified by faith now what he's talking about there is we put our faith faith always has an object and the object of our faith is Jesus Christ we put our faith in the finished work of Jesus on the cross which alone justifies us. So we're not trying to justify ourselves as if we could because we can't. So we put our faith. But notice what he says uh, about what Jesus has unlocked for us through that, that, that our placing our faith in him. He says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, no longer is there a condition of war between you and God. Through Jesus, by placing your faith in his finished work at the cross, you now are at peace with God. There is no condition of war. There is no struggle. You are at peace with him. No striving, which is incredible. He says also through whom we have access by faith, again, there's that word, faith, into this grace in which we stand. Faith, your faith in the finished work of Jesus Act allows you to access grace. That's the covering. That, that's the unmerited favor, if you will, uh, the gift of God to you of forgiveness uh, so that God's grace is poured on your life 
through faith. Now he says, he goes on and says that not only that, but we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Your faith in the finished work of Jesus also enables you to connect with hope that you're going to be glorified along with God. You're going to enter into God's glory. Now again, that's powerful because you see, God is he's perfect. And, and you know, hope again in a biblical sense is not like we often use the word here on as humans. You know, a lot of times when we use the word hope, we have this this shadow of doubt attached to it. I hope that I'm going to have a good day today. That indicates there's some doubt that I will. But biblical hope is tied again. It ha- Just as faith has an object, so does hope. Your hope is tied to the finished work of Jesus Christ. So there is no uncertainty there because Jesus was raised from the dead and overcame the power of death in the grave. You can trust that finished work to ensure that you too, as Jesus was glorified with the Father, you too, my friend, are going to enter into that same glory. Now he goes on and says this, which is very powerful in verse 3. Not only does that hope assure us that we're going to be glorified with Christ, but it also gives us the ability to face the tribulations that are inevitable with this life. You know, on this earth, we will have trouble. That's what Jesus said. But if our eyes are fixed on the hope of the of, of glory of God, then when we encounter persecute or tribulation, look what it does. It produces perseverance. Because now we understand our tribulations have a context. They are finite. They will end one day because our hope is fixed on the glory of God that we will enter into with him because of the finished work of Christ. That perseverance produces character. Now we're beginning to be formed by that tribulation into the character of Christ. And in that character provides more hope. And he says in verse 5, hope does not disappoint because the love of God, see that, that hope enters us into the love of God that has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom God has has given to us. So God has placed the Spirit of God in you as a down payment of the glory that you're going to share with God in fullness when we see Jesus face to face. The Holy Spirit is working that weight of glory inside of you. And see, all of this is unlocked by putting our faith in Christ. You know, we put our eyes on the finished work of Jesus and it transforms even the worst experiences we have as human beings on earth. The the trouble and the things that we go through, they don't have to dominate us anymore. They don't have to cause us to lose hope. They, in fact, point us to a greater weight of glory that's being worked in us through the Holy Spirit. All of this, friends, is unlocked by putting our eyes on the justification that Jesus Christ has brought to us through the cross. Friends, Paul is just giving us something to be excited about this one. I hope I can hardly contain my excitement today, as you can tell. This is exciting stuff because I understand that, that what Jesus Christ has given me through the cross, it's not something I deserved. It's not something I earned. Neither did you. But God gave it to us because of his deep love for us. Friends, today I hope this encourages you. I hope that it gives you a, a, a context for your suffering. I hope that it gives you a, you know, a reason today to rejoice in the Lord. And today, no matter what comes your way, no matter what tribulation is on your plate, put your eyes on the finished work of Jesus at the cross. There is your justification. There is your peace. There is grace, there is hope, there is glory, and there is love. Would you pray with me? Thank you, God, for reminding me today of what you have done for me, Jesus, at the cross. And I just pray that today my faith would be totally in you, Lord, that I would put my eyes on you and you alone to provide for me everything that Paul has said is mine through Christ. I thank you, Lord, for everyone that's listening in today, and I pray that today our our lives would display your glory to a looking world. We love you, Lord, and thank you so much for your grace and mercy, and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you today. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday.